So we stopped the conversation on your, on your platform talking about therapy and the weaponizing thereof. And you were saying that you feel like, you know, go to therapy um, can be weaponized so that people are using it as a way to, to hurt or shame other people. And I was saying that, you know, that really is the, the, the attachment that we have to the word therapy and how we feel that it's weaponized is really personal and what stuff that we can work on within ourselves. But since we're starting up here on this platform, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what it is that you were doing and saying that brought us together? Well, my name is Ace Metaphor and um, I'm a poet, motivational speaker and a nurse by day. I'm, I work part-time as an RN um, at a hospital. And what, what brought us here was a video that I made. It's a monologue that I made, three minutes long monologue that was talking about how I wanted to be loved and valued as a person, that I wanted my qualities to not be marginalized to what I can provide, but what I can do, how I can be there for you. Everything that I do, do as a person, that I wanted to be appreciated in every facet the way I expect you do expect that I appreciate you also, that I need that type of relationship, that I don't want one where there's not a space where I can take my cape off and be vulnerable. So that's the video. And then we got here because I created some dialogue on your page and say, hey, listen, I appreciate some of your content, but I would love to talk about the narrative that was created. And so I'm glad that you responded and accepted the invitation and we just did 30 minutes on my platform and it was amazing so i hope this 30 minutes will be equally as enjoyable mm -hmm. okay and so my subscribers most likely saw the video that mm -hmm. i did where i was talking about how judging from what it is that you were saying inside that video that it was clear that therapy was needed and that that would be uh, one of the the main priorities before talking about getting into a relationship in the video you didn't state the things that you're talking about here about how you want to be appreciated um, and take off your cape and be vulnerable etc in the video there was a lot of things that were left unsaid and what it is that I gathered from the video is that you wanted to be loved as a vulnerable person you wanted your woman to be able to force you to take to to take to take her money, not take her money, but force you to be able to take gifts from her, et cetera, force you. And so I was like, you know, these are these are these are these are red flags. And when I asked you on your page whether or not whether or not you had you had gotten therapy yourself and I, and you said that you got therapy many years ago when you were young and that you've been thinking about getting therapy recently. Um, but then you haven't made any, any moves towards getting therapy. And when I started talking about us making videos from our brokenness, there was an energy that kind of came up like, where you even stated out loud, I'm not broken. Um, and then you started talking about how you don't necessarily need to go to, you don't need therapy and that stuff like that is weaponized, et cetera. And I was like, well, if somebody says, are you going to the grocery store, you know, or do you need to go to school or you need to go to school, whatever, that we don't interpret that as, you know, as, as a weaponization because of the attachment that we have to what therapy is. And so on the one hand, you're like, okay, well, I, um, I, I believe that everybody should get therapy and saying it so buoyantly, but then when we start talking about it, then you start getting defensive, like something is wrong with therapy. And my subscribers know, I recently, all of this stuff going on with Trump and the election, all of this impounding, all of this stuff, I, had, I started seeing a therapist a few weeks ago. This is why, this is why I asked you what, what steps you were taking, and it sounded like you weren't taking any steps to actually go in that direction. Well, um, just to respond to one of the things you said, it wasn't a defensive matter, it was a protective, because also I realized that there was 133 people watching. And so what I wanted to make sure that was clear is that I can take our verbal jabs or whatever, or whenever something is directed towards me, it's cool. But what I didn't want to do is reinforce the stigma that the word therapy is only thrown to people where people think another person has a problem that should be gone. And so what I said was, 
therapy isn't a, always a reactionary thing. It's a preventative thing. So I wanted everybody that was watching to understand and know that going to therapy doesn't mean things are bad or that you're broken. It just means that you are okay. You can be okay. You can be great. You just want to be that step above. You're great. You want to be exceptional. So what I said was, hey, I don't want the word therapy to be weaponized where people shun away from it. So doctors are good, right? It's really good. But a lot of people shun away from doctors because that was associated with going to the doctor, getting the, the pain and this and that. And so I don't want people to shy away from the word therapy, right. therapy. But, when we, but you know when what? When we toss it around only at people that we think haven't recovered from issues. So that's why I said, I think a, it's a good idea for everybody, not even therapy. It doesn't have to be therapy. It can be counseling. It can be a spiritual advisor. And it can be an older one with whom you trust that has a lot of wisdom. And so that, those are the things that I, I believe in. So that's why I said, just to end it, it wasn't me being defensive about myself. It was me being protective of, of, of other people that may be unfamiliar with what therapy is. Yeah, you know, and so, and, and I'm glad that you made that point. And I, I really want to move on because other people want to know my stance on the whole protector provider thing as well. The best way to be an example for people about about therapy being normal and, 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 and good for all of us is to not get defensive and protective about it. You know, therapy is, if, if, if you feel that talking about therapy and somebody talking, because you even said, you, you were like, I'm very proud of who it is that I've become. As if you, it, the, the opposite of being proud is being ashamed. So then when you start associating therapy with then on the flip side, being ashamed of who it is that you've become, the best way, the best way to normalize something is, to, is, to, is for it to be normal and for it to not feel like a jab when people are talking about therapy. So when we, when, and then also I, and, and, and I think that one of the dangerous things is like, you're like, oh, you know, um, you can go to an older person or you can go to people who may not be qualified to provide therapy for a person and not even so much quote unquote preventative or, or none of that other stuff. All of us, when we start talking about all of us needing therapy, right? We have to admit that all of us came out of childhood with some sort of brokenness, all of us. So how can we say all of us need therapy if we're going to then say, oh, well, only people who, who are broken need therapy? No, even if you have some brokenness, even if there's some things that are happening right now that are creating some, some, some slices in you, you know, because it's like, there's, there's that one straw that breaks the camel's back, not because there's anything the matter with you, but because this is life. And because no human being escaped from childhood without some sort of trauma, we've all had it. So when I say that we are, when we make videos from our brokenness, I'm talking about me too. There's brokenness that I have. There's brokenness that you have. Every single person, 111 people who are on this bro broadcast, all of us. Can I ask a question in the audience? Please put up the number one if you have some brokenness from childhood. Put up the number two if there's absolutely no brokenness whatsoever. And so there's some people, I saw someone that said that they don't believe therapy is the solution to everything. You have to find a therapist that is right for you. But I definitely believe that you need to entrust your, your co-creation co of your health with a person who is psychologically trained in the development of the mind and, and navigating through those canals. I definitely, so people are putting up one, one person has put up a two, they have no brokenness. So anyway, so, so go ahead, go ahead, Ace. Um, I, I appreciate all the points you made and I, I agree with everything you said. Um, it's just the way, I, I like to phrase it as different. You know what I mean? It's just that. And the reason I say that is, you know, I work as an RN. So I'm always sensitive about how I present mental health to people because it is, it, it is something that immediately gets stigmatized. And so that's why, that's why I was just protective of, of the idea, but not defensive personally. And to bring it home, I definitely think therapy for myself would be a great thing. Um, it'd be a great thing, especially in the field I do. So like I said, three weeks ago, I went on that kick and I'm, I'm getting to that point. I had to get all my dental shit uh, stuff taken. My bad, y'all. I'm trying not to cut so bad. I had to get my dental stuff taken care of. You know, I got all this fixed. 
but now that's my next thing. Um, um, I actually been to the dentist like four times in the last month. So my next. Let's thing go. Is, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's you know, go. It's 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 on the docket. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely on the docket. But you know, I only got so much time. Right. But yeah. see, but 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 okay. And, and part of the you know what? Part of the reason. Part of the well, you just had a few moments to speak. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason that I even brought it up is because you are making videos about not being able to cry, about people, about women making you feel a certain way from your childhood and the brokenness that was experienced there. And never, when did you say, you said you haven't been able to cry, that you have not physically been able to have water come out of your eyes since you were a baby. Well, well, and oh, you know what? You did say that. I'm mad I didn't get to talk about that then. So, so the, the premise of that is when, when I had that epiphany, and um, just to bring everybody to speed, I basically said, somebody asked me a few weeks ago, and this is just here recent, it, and then it expired a lot of different content that's on my page. Somebody asked me here recently, hey, Ace, when was the last time you cried? And when I thought about it, like you don't really register that stuff, but when I thought about it, it had been so long. And then I, I said it like, nah, I ain't cry. And then I, when I reflected on that answer, I, I said to myself, is that a good thing? Is it a good thing that I have not allowed myself through triumph, success, death, bad things, good things, to not be filled with emotion so much that it moved me to tears? And not just in a not negative way, but in a, in a positive way. Not in a weak way, but in a strong way. In all the ways in between. And I haven't. And so I said to myself, I have to go back and dive into why I haven't been able to cry. And then that's what inspires some of the videos. And so when I go back to thinking about and meditating in my meditation space as to why I go back to my childhood where it was shunned, it, it was discouraged. And even now as an adult, it is almost an emasculating, it's, it's something that if you cry, people feel like you're less of a man. And it's something that I know men can relate to because we've, we've all felt that way. And so when I go back and I unpack that I'm a man, I have to change that within myself. I have to change that that thinking and that stigma and avoid what I like to call and what, what people call a sense of toxic masculinity. It used to be a time where I handled right. my, my emotions only through expressing anger. And it's a good thing when I watched the YouTube, you made a lot of good points about how black men, black men are disproportionately more jailed, prisoned, um, permit more crimes, more poverty, can't vote, can't influence change because we haven't been taught to control our emotions or express them in a cope, cope, like a properly coping way. And so when you think about it, when I go back to my childhood, let me tell you a story. Somebody hit me, I went home and I told my mom. My mom told me, you go back and hit him. And when I hit him and beat him up and I went home, I was rewarded for that. And so that training that's instilled in you, that toughness, that hardness, and you said, you know, as a black man, you got to be tough at what you do. But that hardness, it also has negative effects, not only on relationships, but in life. So then you grow up thinking that anger is the way to solve your problems. And that's why you got murders, crime rate, and this, that, and other. And that's why. It's, yes. So a lot of good men are potentially good men are taken away because they went to jail. They can't get good jobs now. They got felonies. Right. And so, and so, and so part of, and so, and so, with the, and this is why I'm saying it's so important to heal that brokenness. And I, it's a way that young black girls are social. We've lost Ace. <laughs> We've lost him. So when he gets a moment to come back, you know, I'm just going to finish up that. Hold on. This is the way that, that black girls are socialized as well. Not being able to cry, not being able to emote, not being able to, to, to express her emotions and her feelings, right? So, um, so what, what, what I want you to do right now, right? I want you in the most vicious way that you can, I want you to weaponize, go to therapy. And I want you to say that to me. Okay, weaponize it in any way that you need to. All right, go say it to me now. Weaponize it however you want to say it in the worst way. Say it to me. I, I wouldn't be able to. I feel like it's 
it, would have, to, it, it would have to be situational. It is not. I don't believe it. Listen, it's you, not the. It's not the. You're it, you're an actor. You're an actor, and and you're a spoken word poet, right? So just say it. Even if you just have to furrow your brows and say, "Go to therapy." Even if you have to do that, please do it to me just now, please. I don't believe I can say it in a way right now without those specific circumstances to to weaponize it. Like if that makes sense. Try. try. Just even just even just shout it. Okay. Can the people in the audience with some exclamation points and some and some and some capital letters shout at me that I need to go to therapy? Please do it now. Just shout it. Type it. Type it. I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> because when what I'm saying is, so you know, so we when we make content, content comes through our filters. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff that we're saying is all a reflection of all of the things that we've been through and the things that we're currently going through, right? <laughs> and so when you say stuff like you can't cry and these things happened and listen, I understand. I want you, okay. So age, <laughs> so the people are saying it, thank you. See, now look, you need therapy. You need to go to therapy. You know what? Maybe I do. Maybe I do. And I believe firmly, Maybe I do. firmly from my heart, firmly from my heart, that those words should only be, be delivered to people. In order for it to be a fest, a, effective and the, the application to be made, it should be given out of a space unprompted by a particular action, but in the moment of love. You feel what I'm saying? Not a scolding. Not no. discipline, and and the re I'm telling you the reason I'm saying is is it, it, I just feel like that makes it more therapeutic than that. That's a therapeutic communication technique. That and you know what? And this is like right, but this is but this is what I'm saying, Ace. We cannot control other people. We can't control whether or not they speak to us lovingly. We can't control whether or not they say things in a therapeutic way. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we can control is ourselves and our response to it. So when you say that other people are making you feel or making you think a certain thing, that's personal. You have to be the one that is able to check yourself and be like, you know what, that's me. And that's my stuff coming up right now. Because th this person is saying some words. It's my attachment to those words that depicts how it is that I'm going to interact with those words. I agree. I agree. So, mm -hmm. so, can, so, 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 mm -hmm. so I, I think we've talked, I think we've talked about yeah. therapy enough. And, and, and I'll say this, I'll say this to the people. There's, there's nothing wrong with therapy. The same way that you get a physical checkup, go get mental and psychological health checkups as well. Whether somebody screams it at you, whether you think it yourself, the shame and, and whatever it is that you feel inside about it. Like, I, I feel no shame. I, 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 I feel no shame about it because it's normalized in my life, even if you said it in the most vicious way. So what I, what I wanted to do so is, is respond to the narrative that I thought ha happened um, briefly and then have you have an opportunity, obviously, to address it or whatever. But 